Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Kahakwadash. Double honor to the elders and the apostle, great millstone of Ruel, who teach this gospel and push this gospel to the four corners of the earth, risking their lives and freedoms to do so, especially in these times. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. The 144,000, the apostles, the elders, the brethren, the prophets, the teachers, the great millstone, the Ruel, risking their lives and freedoms to do so, also to be included, representing the house of Israel, the rulers on behalf of the house of Israel, <clears throat> better known to many by the ones to be saved, salvation has been promised to them on behalf of <clears throat> Shalom. Now the inspiration for this video comes to me on behalf of um, Yahweh B'Shem Shah had awakened me early this morning and I thanked him for that because he didn't have to, but he allowed me the opportunity to continue on in my lot, teaching, prophesying, against Mount Seir, pursuing Ezekiel 35 and 2, showing Israel their transgressions. Cry aloud, spare not, he says. Show my people their transgressions. <clears throat> pursuant to Isaiah 58, bringing forth prophecies, proving that his word is faithful and true, and that he is hastening his word to perform it, pursuant to Jeremiah 1 and 12. And... Um, well, last evening, last night, I turned in and turned myself down to the covers at about 1.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, <clears throat> and I was doing some reorganization, rearranging of furniture in my room to make my room a little bit more accessible and easier for me because I'm, I'm in a small room, and um, I have a lot of stuff in this room. And um, I got to move through here in a very particular type of way. So I said, I'll, I've been wanting to do it now for a while, but I haven't been putting it off. I've just been gathering some other items that I need in this room and then trying to figure out what's the best way to arrange it where it works for me and it doesn't create, create clutter, which is confusion. <clears throat> um, but anyway, um, I did do some, I, I worked in my room and <clears throat> cleaned up a lot of stuff and got rid of a lot of stuff. Anytime you have something that you feel you need, you haven't accessed it or looked at it or pulled it out in six months to a year, you don't need it. Because when the hell is you going to ever need it? It's been a whole year. You know, I work every day. I teach the gospel every day. I read in my room every day. I pray in my room every day. I call the Nordists or the Ark so that they will appear pursuant to Scripture. And out of all my inner workings and hustles and whatnot, I still don't need it in a year. I ain't going to never need it. All right, so we have to keep that in mind because many people are, 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 are acquiring more and more things and acquiring more and more purchases online, and they just pack and then pack and then pack and then putting it up and holding on to it. And for what? These things are not going to mean anything on the day of the Lord power. And then they also, those items, physical items, will also be consumed when the nuclear missiles come down upon Babylon the Great as prophesied. <clears throat> now, getting to the point, this is a short, quick hit of something that Yahweh Shemesh I had brought to my attention very early this morning when I was outside getting a little fresh air from time to time because a lot of there's a lot of dust in my room. My room's not dusty, but if there's a shiffer or a dresser or a chest or a chest or something that ain't been touched or accessed in a year, and I just keep putting stuff on top of it and moving stuff around, there's a lot of dust that has been acquired. We know that dust in the Bible, in the spirit, means confusion. So 
I am clearing the clutter, removing confusion from my environment. Now, I uh, was outside not too long ago. Um, <clears throat> it has, it's, it's nearing daybreak in Eastern Standard Time, but not yet. I mean, the sky is starting to show us that the sun is soon to arise. And I think the sun is up probably. Sunrise will probably be about maybe 45 minutes from now. So anyway, getting to the point of the matter, I began to think about something that had come across my mind right before I came into knowledge of the truth. And let me tell you what that is. I said, I'm trying to figure out. I said, yeah, I need to, right before I came to knowledge of the truth, I had started reading, not in the spirit. Um, I had started in the New Testament first, like all the Christians say, but I had said to myself that, I will read all of the New Testament because I'm most familiar with those books because I've read excerpts here and there. But I will go back and read the Old Testament because under false doctrine, they called us, we called ourselves Gentiles. Now we know some of the Romans 9 and 4 Gentiles are Israelites scattered abroad, growing up and being raised and being educated in societies where the Gentiles are, therefore they have Gentile mind states, but they are still Israelites. Romans 9 and 4 will cover that for you, where you can understand. If you are to understand and you can receive it, receive it. But, <clears throat> so I used to always say, people would say, well, I would say to people, well, I'm, I'm in the New Testament now, but I'm really going to read the Old Testament. And Christians will tell you, it's quick, especially a woman, Oh, you, you, you can read the Old Testament. It's good to read because it's in the Bible, but don't put too much emphasis on it because that's the law and we ain't under the law. Well, that's not what the Lord says out of his own mouth in Matthew 5, 17 and 18 and Matthew 24 and 34 and 35 and in Baruch 4 and 1 and in Proverbs 28 and 4. So somebody is lying or someone is not learned enough in the scripture to understand that. But now, so I began to ponder something at the time when I was reading. And let me say, go back and finish my statement there. I, I am going to read the Old Testament because if at the time I had believed, which was incorrect, that I was a Gentile and I was grafted in, then I need to know what am I grafted into? Why was I grafted? And now that I'm grafted, what's expected of me? So it won't be no surprises as we get through the end of these days because Jacob's trouble is going to hit a lot of people by storm and by accident because they haven't been reading and they're not aware of what's coming. Yahweh Shem Shah by His Spirit has awakened us, bringing us to the knowledge of the truth, connecting us with the prophets of Great Millstone to learn and be edified by the apostles, which is followed by Abba Bivens, which is one of the Holy Commandment keepers. So now we have access to 100% truth and we understand and know all things according to His Spirit, the Spirit of Yahweh Shem Shah. Now let's get to the points at hand. <laughs> So, I began to ask myself back then when I was first starting to read, I said, why would God create these evil people? And why will they be so damn evil? Like, they are 100% pressed in evil. I mean, they ain't doing no damn good in no way, form, or fashion. And if they are doing something good, it's a damn setup for something evil. And I, and I began to start questioning some other things. Not that I was questioning God. I was questioning why would he do this? But then I, then how I saved my damn self from continuing on in that line of thinking is because I said to myself, if I start questioning this and start questioning that, I would start questioning this and I start questioning that. Although I understand, but obviously I didn't understand because it was false doctrine, false worship, false God at the time. Then I will be in doubt so heavily, it'll be Genesis chapter 3 happening all over again. And are we not referred to as the daughters of Zion? 
All right. I would be in my lot 100% at the time without knowledge, without power, without understanding, without wisdom. So I stopped with that. Don't know why. I see why now. So y'all be sure I put it in me then, although I couldn't understand what, what, you know, I knew some things, and I knew some old things, but I didn't know enough to connect the dots, and as were many of us before we were awakened to the knowledge of the truth. But I, what, what inspired me to do this video after thinking on that a few minutes out the door about 15 minutes ago was that I said, you know, this would be a good video once I actually talked it out and broke it down to myself. <laughs> yeah, I meant it's the grace to my own ears. Quite often, that's called meditating on the word, where we are commanded to meditate on the word day and night, according to Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, and Psalm chapter 1, verse 2. That's a commandment. Yeah. <clears throat> and he says in his scriptures in John 14, 15, let me keep my commandments. So I like to point out, bring out a few scriptures, just a few to help you to understand what Yahweh Shemeshah had said unto me by his spirit this morning. And I said, this would be a great lesson. It's a short, quick hit. Normally, I would be reading right now, or I'd be uh, listening to some of the videos I was listening to last night while I was cleaning my room before I turned in at 1.30 this morning. So let's get to it. <clears throat> First and foremost, we understand according to scripture that God is a God of balance. Let's bring up that scripture and prove that. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 11. Like that's coming up. Hell no, that ain't coming like that. <clears throat> A just weight and balance are the Lord's powers. All the weights of the bag are his work. That's correct, because we know that, um, in fact, let's get this in the, in, the, in the blue letter. That way you can catch the wording of what I speak in NLT on the right-hand side of your screen. Wait one. <clears throat> Come on, man. Oh, I tell you. Proverbs 16 11. This app is crazy as I don't know what. Okay, the scripture I've just read, Proverbs 16 11, King James Version, is on the left hand side of your screen. The scripture that I will read now is the New Living Translation on the right hand side. The Lord demands accurate scales and balances. He sets the standards for fairness. Okay, a king detests wrongdoing. The word detest means to hate. A king detests wrongdoing for his rule is built on justice. Okay. <clears throat> and 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 let me let me tell you something. See that word king? Lowercase K. Well, who are the kings? Lowercase K. They are the rulers, the elders, the priests, the governors, 144,000, the brothers that have repented. Salvation has been promised to them. They've been dispositioned to be saved pursuant to Scripture. That's a lowercase k. So they are the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. And the Bible says that our Lord power is the king of kings and lord of lords. The word lord means man. Okay. We see episodes of that in scripture where Sarah speaks unto Abraham, Abram at the time, and says, my Lord. She refers to her husband as my Lord. Okay. And Yahweh Shire, we are the bride uh, to be, 
the elect is, the hope elect that is, are the bride to be for their Lord, their husband. Jeremiah 3.14 says, Return unto me, O backsliding Israel, for you are married unto me. I will come and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will take you back unto Zion. Okay, now let's keep on. So since we understand that Yahweh Bishim is a God of balance, he's going to operate both sides. Let's get another preacher for that as well. Um, Job 12, 16. <clears throat> yes, strength and wisdom are his. Deceivers and deceived are both in his power. The deceiver, who's the great deceiver? The father of lies, Satan, right? And his people doing his, uh, the the people that are assigned to wickedness pursuant to Malachi and one and for our enemy is operating in the spirit and under the direction of Satan, right? Okay, now, and that's the left hand side. Also, the two thirds of the house of Israel has made a covenant with the heathen. They've sided with the enemy. They were against the word. They were against Yahweh Shai back in days past. They are still in that lot right now. Luckily, that's one and nine. What has been should be again. There's nothing new in the sun, roughly paraphrasing. So they're still in that damn spot. Uh, Exodus 34 and 7 tells us, Our father visits the iniquity of his children to the third and fourth generations. We keep coming back in the earth over and over and over again. Same spirit, different body, different time, doing the same shit. Until, unless we are considered for awakening between the Hosea 6 and 2 and then repentance. Then we begin to change our ways, change our walk, change our thoughts, change our actions. Repenting, returning back into Yahweh Bishim Shah. The way things were originally set up to be back in the beginning before the very foundations of the world. Now, <clears throat> as you can see here, with him is strength and wisdom, the deceived and the deceived are his. He leadeth counselors away spoiled and maketh the judges fools. He looseth the bond of kings and gird their loins with a girdle. He leadeth princes away spoiled and overthrow the mighty. He removeth away the speech of the trusty, and taketh away the understanding of the aged. He pours contempt upon princes, and weakeneth the strength of the mighty. He discovered deep things out of darkness, and bringeth out to, to light the shadow of death. He increaseth the nations and destroyed them. He enlargeth the nations and straightened them again. He taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth, the heart means mind, of the chief of the people of the earth, that's who? Jacob ruling, chief of the people, right? He taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth. He causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way yet because Michael 2 and 10 tells us what? Let's get that. There's no way here. There's no rightful, justful way not here in Babylon the Great. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. And that word sore destruction refers to the nuclear missile, second death. Let's go back. He taketh away the heart of the people. So he taketh away their mind, what's right unto them. Yeah, Al-Bashim says in the scripture that he removes, he takes away the heritage from his people. That's why we didn't know who the hell we were. We had accepted what the heathen had said unto us, until the enemy had said unto us, that we were African Americans. Wait a minute. And if anybody who lives up north and in these big giant city centers in America know wherever the sons of Ham are, the Africans have come to America for a better opportunity that ended up with a damn nightmare as we did <clears throat> know that as Hamites, which are the Africans, do not care or do not agree in attitude with the children of Israel. Anybody notice that? Because we're not the same people. <laughs> 
Shit, you ain't the same damn people, that buddy. All right. Now, <clears throat> let's continue on. And you, as you can see, that that uh, uh, chapter and verses there, I, I was on a roll with them because everything that I was speaking and reading according to Scripture, we definitely understand that in the spirit and experience it daily. So if you'd like, you can. That's a great place you'd start reading this morning when you awaken, giving all praises to our power. All right, now. Let's get something else. Let's get to Rock 3928. That's Rock. Um, Deuteronomy. I can remember. <laughs> Dang it. <clears throat> mm -mm. It's locked in. I think it's 28, 32. 32, 39, it's locked. Let's go down. We're wrapping this up, believe it or not. I just want to do something quick because I was up. I had been meditating the word and I already prayed and I was clean and watching the news intermittently between the two because I missed the news last night. So I didn't miss it, but. My mom always knows every night I come in to the kitchen and set my, since I have direct TV, direct TV allows me an opportunity to go back to the beginning of a programming. So if I set up my TV on a particular channel at 1050 or 1045, then if I bust, if I come in the kitchen and begin watching TV at, um, 11.08, I can always back up to 11 o'clock. But if you ain't there, you can't go back. <laughs> and which lines up with scripture as well. Uh, Isaiah 33 and 6, and knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times and strength of our salvation. So if you have the knowledge, because you experience it by reading and understanding in the spirit, you, you can always go back. But if you don't have it because you haven't been reading, you can't get in it. Call it like them, like y'all be sure shot. <laughs> now, let's get, keep on here because we're almost done. See now that I, even I, am He, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Look now, I myself am He. There is no other God but me. I am the one who kills and gives life, I'm the one who wounds and heals. No one can be rescued from my powerful hand. That's my word. Now, I wrote that scripture for one reason. I'm going to 1 Samuel 2, 6 and 7, which is a precept as well. And the reason why I'm doing these two precepts, why I'm, just, why I'm going over them, is simply because Yahweh Shemeshai, going back to my question of doubt, why would God make a people that are so damn evil. Why? Because this this is what Yahweh Mishimisha brought to my attention. This is what I had conferred according to the Spirit and according to my love of understanding up until this time from 2018 when he first brought me in the truth and connected me with Great Millstone. One thing that I began to understand was that I, I had said in a particular format, which was like banging outside. <laughs> I, but let's see if I can attempt to go there once again. I said, hmm, all people upon the earth were primitive. But then Yahweh B'Shem Shah breathed into Adam and he became a living soul. That breath that he breathed into Adam is representative of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now that he, so that now, Jacob is the only people on the earth to have understanding of all things, and we can back that up in Psalm 147, 19. Give me a second. And Amos 3 and 2. Let's get it. Oh, come on, man. <clears throat> nope, that's right.
Psalm 147, verse 19. Left hand side, he sheweth. The word sheweth means to make known, to cause to know, to appoint, to proclaim, to publish. He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes, and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so with any nation. As for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise you, Lord, power. And we did not know his judgment because, once again, he removed our heritage away from us. So the law, statutes, commandments, and ordinances, high holy days, prophecies, were lost to us at the time. But the Lord says, Behold, there is a remnant that I have. They will repent. They will return unto me. Because he will cause it to be that way. Proverbs 20, 24, man's going to of the Lord. How then can he understand his own way? Okay. Now, let's keep on. Also, the deceived and deceived are his, Job 12, 16. So that the deceiver, our enemy, and the deceived, the two-thirds of the house of belong to him. Balance. That's the left-hand side. Then that must also be happening on the right-hand side as well. Because he's a God of balance pursuant to Proverbs 16, 11. Correct. Excellent. Now, here we go. Um, let's get Amos 3 and 2 as well. And we did not know his judgments because, again, he took away our heritage um, from us. And I will post that scripture in the description box as well. Amos 3 and 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for your iniquities. Yeah, because we are the only ones under the law. Let's get that. I may have mentioned to it, but I'm going to pull it out, bring it out right now. Romans 9 and 4. Let's go up. Let's start at 3. For I could wish that myself were cursed from my Hamashiach, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, twelve tribes of Israel. And we also know that Yahweh Shai comes out of the the tribe of Judah, pursuant to Hebrews seven fourteen, Revelation five five. The Bible also tells us that the scepter shall not depart from Judah, and the word scepter is referencing the ransom, the sacrifice which Yahweh died on the cross um, under Pontius Pilate, our enemy, the Greeks. Um, and he was a Roman governor, was he not? Okay. And um, he died so that we can be reconciled, rec rep reconciled, reconnected with back to Yahweh. Okay, so it required a sacrifice of his body, of him who he was, John 5 and 30, I can do nothing of myself. I do these things because the Holy Spirit which operated in me. Second Corinthians 5, 21, he came in the world, he knew no sin, he committed no sin, but he became sin so that we might have righteousness in of God in him and connected back with us, okay? So now, with that being said, he became sin. How did he become sin? Because he married, he, he married to, his uh, wife, okay, which was Eve. He was Adam in the, in Adam and Yahweh Shai is the same spirit, different body, okay. Adam and Yahweh Shai, first Timothy chapter 2, around 9 through 12, and 2 Corinthians 5, 21, never was deceived. They never committed any sin. There is only one that had the ability and the power operating on him in John 5 and 30 to have done such a thing, and that's who Yahweh Shai. Okay, so Galatians 5.16 says, If you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Was he not walking in the Spirit? Yes, because John chapter 5 verse 30 tells us that he says, I can do nothing of my own will. I do these things because of the Holy Spirit, which operates in me. As I hear, I judge. And he goes on a little further. So now let's get, let's get a few more here. Romans 9 and 3. We've read that four. Let's start again so we will make it make sense. For verse three, for I could wish that myself were cursed from a Mashiach, from my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertains the adoption 
and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. New living, my uh, from my heart, verse two, number Romans nine and two, new living, right hand side of your screen. My heart, which is my mind, my heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief for my people, my brothers and sisters. I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from the Mashiach, which is the anointed, if that would save them. They are the people of Israel, chosen to be God's adopted children. God revealed his glory to them. He made covenants with them and gave them his law. He gave them the privilege of worshiping him and receiving his wonderful promises. Now, I said all that and brought the scriptures out to, to, to speak this. Y'all has got a balance. Okay, he operates the left hand side, which is the wicked side. Um, headed under the direction of Satan, okay? Satan does his bidding in the earth and the people, that people, as they such a wild Malachi 1 and 4, says that they should be called the border of the territory of wickedness, okay? Now, so, Yahweh Shemem Shai, in his perfection, has poised and set up his left-hand side, pushing it 100% to the end of the earth, being the best that he can be overseeing wickedness. On the right-hand side, as sitting to his right-hand side is Jehovah Shah, his son, the Hebrew in whom he's well pleased, okay? All right? And with him, the angels, all right? And the hopeful electoral house of Israel, to include the 144,000 are all on the right-hand side. They are living and operating and acting and speaking and thinking on things righteously according to the law and according to their faith of in Yahweh B'Shem Shai. So Yahweh B'Shem Shai is also God of balance, God of balance, God of balance. He is poised to perfect, to the master to perfection, the righteous ones, upright living, upright talk, no speech or no slacking, no guile in their mouth, keeping the law to the best of their ability, rehearsing it as such, pursuing the Judges 5.11, bringing out prophecy, uh, crying aloud, sparing not, showing Israel their transgressions pursuant to Isaiah 58 and 1, speaking the prophecies, living in prophecies, watch standing upon their watchtower, watching at all costs, at all time, teaching on the highways and hedges pursuant to Matthew 22 and 9, Luke 14, 21 and 20, 20, Luke 14, 21 through 23, the law backing that up, Isaiah 30 and 20. And they are imitators of the Most High, and they are like him, because Yahweh B'Shem Shai says, Haven't I said that you are gods? And haven't I said you are my friends? <laughs> so Yahweh B'Shem Shai, by his spirit, by all that he has power over, which is over all things that we see and don't see in the spirit realm, and things that we have not known, but we have been privy to according to the knowledge of the truth and understanding that he was this way back in the day. Ecclesiastes 3.15 says, God requires that which is past. So now, to understand all that, we also going to say he's got a balance, so he's going to do that, striving for the master, striving for perfection, showing himself mighty and strong to the hope of electoral house of Israel to include 144,000. He's going to be true to his word. He cannot lie. He will not lie. He will go out and perform all that he said he has so we can see his faith and truth to his word. And then he's going to push that 144% to the end, all the way to the ends of the earth in righteousness on the right-hand side. So he has all power pushing the wicked to the wick to do wickedness, and he has all power pushing the righteous to do righteousness. That's the left and the right side. Got a balance. This lesson is complete. I just want to bring that out. So you're gonna get in where you fit in wherever your lot is, damn it, there you shall be. <laughs> Hope this lesson has been edifying and has come to the honor, glory, and power of Yahweh B'Shem 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 I had a closing precept when I thought about this video outside before I came in the beginning, but it has escaped me. If it returns, I will post it on the comment board as well. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh B'Shem 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 B'Shem
double honor to the eldest and apostle, great and the son of the well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, the house of the builder in the tabernacle of David. I will also post my um, first Henry 2, 6, and 7, which lines up with Deuteronomy 32, 39 as well. I'll probably put both those precepts in the comment board so you can see and understand the scriptures. Okay? So until I upload the next one, which is going to be a prophecy video, I'd like for it to be, Lord willing it will be, because I'm not, I'm, I'm slacking on prophecy videos. Now, right now, what I'm actually doing is combining prophecy events, you know, video together. But um, if that works, it works. But And it's been working. But I want to streamline because I need to update us in the Karagma and a few other scriptures coming from the Apocrypha with the prophecies. So the next one, Shalom.